Why is it that some people get really sleepy and fatigued if they have a high carbohydrate meal, whilst others feel energetic, they have a lot of vitality and vibrance following a high carb meal? What's the difference between those that struggle versus those that can you know, withstand up to 600, 700 grams of carbs per day? So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please like this video, smash subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to respond to each and every single one. So ultimately in this video, we're gonna look at how we can counteract and reduce the fatigue that people experience following a high carbohydrate meal. Now, my stance on this topic is that all humans should be able to tolerate a high carbohydrate meal within the daytime and not feel groggy, sleepy or fatigued. If you do, then you have some degree of metabolic dysfunction that needs to be addressed. So what I'll do is let's take a look at why some people experience this carbohydrate intolerance. So first and foremost, the most obvious one is insulin resistance or a lack of insulin sensitivity. Number two, we have high serotonin. We also have adrenal issues. We have also candida or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We have low B vitamin status or low thyroid hormone output. So all of these can contribute to um, carbohydrate intolerance. So insulin resistance, that's primarily looking at the inability to utilize glucose in the cell and instead causing high amounts of sugar in the bloodstream that's not being utilized to create ATP. We also have high serotonin. So serotonin, you guys may not know this, but one of the leading causes of fatigue during exercise is actually a buildup of serotonin in the brain. So high serotonin is relevant here because you can see that carbohydrate intake can help to shuttle tryptophan into the brain with the help of insulin. So tryptophan requires insulin to get into the brain and therefore once tryptophan is into the brain, it can release and synthesize serotonin because tryptophan is the precursor to serotonin. In addition, we also have adrenal issues. So many people don't realize that one of the functions of cortisol is to actually raise blood sugar. And so if people have issues with blood sugar control, adrenal issues may be a culprit. The candida and SIBO. So this is in relation to the fact that these candida or bacterial dysfunction or microbiota disruption can impair the ability to utilize carbohydrates as a fuel source and even lead to to an increase in serotonin as well and affect um, various brain neurotransmitter systems. The low B vitamin status, this is in relation to the inability to use B vitamins to actually act as a cofactor to convert the glucose we have in our food into ATP. Um, so I'll touch on that shortly. And then thyroid hormones is a whole nother topic that requires an entire new video for. So what can be done to fix this carbohydrate intolerance or reduce the sleepy effects after a meal? We have my top five list here. So number one is go for a walk or move after eating. Number two, we have take one capsule of DHB. I'll be talking about what DHB is very shortly. Number three, we have lower serotonin. Number four, we have increased liver glycogen storage um, using taurine. Number five, we have take specific B vitamins with meals. And so let's get stuck into these particular strategies that will help to reduce you feeling so sleepy after a meal. So this one here looks at how just simply going for a 10 to 15 minute walk after a meal can dramatically keep those postprandial blood sugar levels stable. It can reduce the postprandial um, blood sugar spike that we get following a meal. And you can see here in this study, it was titled Back to Basics with Active Lifestyles. Exercise is more effective than metformin to reduce cardiovascular risk in adults with type two diabetes. And basically walking for 10 to 15 minutes is, has been shown to be equally as effective at lowering blood sugar compared to metformin itself. So that's some very promising research that points towards the benefits of just doing something after a meal. Don't just go and sit down and, well, you know, sit down and relax or watch TV, actually move or use your brain, be stimu stimulate yourself. The next one we have is to take DHB 
after a meal or just before your meal. DHB stands for dihydroberberine. If you have seen my channel for a long time, you'll know I've spoken about the benefits of dihydroberberine. Dihydroberberine is actually a metabolite of the classic supplement berberine. Berberine has beneficial effects on blood sugar, but dihydroberberine completely outperforms regular berberine. So dihydroberberine has a better bioavailability and scientists can compared oral DHB to regular berberine, and they found that the intestinal absorption rate of dihydroberberine was five times higher than berberine itself. And amazingly, dihydroberberine can convert back into berberine and ultimately end up uh, more berberine in the blood compared to regular berberine itself. So you'll see a link to purchase dihydroberberine in the video description below. You can check that out. Next up, we have lowering serotonin. So we can offset the rise in serotonin that contributes to fatigue by using tyrosine and BCAAs post meal. So you can see in this picture here, BCAAs, leucine, isoleucine, valine, and the other amino acids, histidine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, they all compete for entry into the brain. They actually share a similar transporter. So by taking tyrosine and BCAAs, we're actually gonna be blocking the uptake of tryptophan into the brain and therefore shift the dominance more towards Towards tyrosine and BCAA. So we're gonna get more dopamine signaling and less serotonin production. So you can use tyrosine and BCAAs uh, with a meal as well. Then we can aim to increase liver glycogen storage. This can be done with taurine. So many people don't realize this, but carbohydrates that we consume can be you know, broken down and stored in muscle, but also in the liver. So we can see that the liver can hold quite a lot of glycogen. And so we can actually increase glycogen storage and improve glycogen storage potential using taurine. You'll see taurine linked in the video description below. You've heard me talk about this numerous times, but taurine has insulin-like effects, which can help to increase the total content of glycogen storage in liver tissue and thereby help to reduce blood sugar. So we're gonna get better glucose utilization by the body. And then finally, we can take specific B vitamins with meals. This epic study looking at high dose biotin B7. You can see the study was titled In Type 1 Diabetics, High Dose Biotin May Compensate for Low Hepatic Insulin Exposure, Promoting a More Normal Expression of Glycolytic and Glucogenic Enzymes, and Thereby Aiding in Glycemic Control. And they stated that high dose biotin may compensate for subnormal insulin exposure by suppressing FOX01 levels. High dose biotin also has the potential to oppose hepatic steatosis by downregulating SREBP1 expression. Two pilot trials of high dose biotin 16 or two milligrams per day in type one diabetics have yielded promising results. So biotin is often used for hair health and other benefits in the body, but we can see here that biotin can offset, you know, the rise in blood sugar that we can, what we experience post meal, which can affect energy levels. So hopefully you learn something new. Hopefully you never get tired and sleepy following a carbohydrate meal ever again after learning about what to do in this video. If you enjoyed the video, please do check out the links in the video description below. I've got amazing resources there. If you haven't already checked out my podcast, my Instagram, please do so. But otherwise guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm really excited to see you in the next video.